Welcome everybody to tutorial number six of this R tutorial series. Um, for this tutorial, we're going to be building off of some of the things we learned in the previous tutorial on linear regressions by doing what's called a hierarchical linear regression, which is um, a version of model comparison. Um, to begin, as I'm, as always, uh, I'm going to remind you of three things. Please download the R code in the data sets if you haven't already done so. Make sure you change your directory here to the directory where you've saved the R code and data sets. And then finally, as a reminder, um, for code that we've gone through in detail in previous tutorials, for all subsequent tutorials, I won't be going into detail about them so that we focus only on the new content. Um, that's being covered in the particular tutorial. Um, if you find yourself kind of getting lost as I'm going quickly through some code that we've already reviewed in detail, then I suggest you you watch some of the, the previous tutorials to um, better understand what we're doing. Let's begin. So for this uh, tutorial, it's going to be relatively short. Um, we only need one package. So we're going to load the package, disable scientific notation, and set our directory. We just need to be able to open this Excel file. We're going to be looking again at the child aggression study data. And what we're doing is doing what's called model comparison. So to begin, really high level, um, because we go into detail in the statistics lectures as to what exactly model comparison is and what it's doing. But what you're doing in model comparison is trying to answer this one question. Does or can we find a model of the outcome measure that is as simple as possible but explains the data the best? Okay. The way you do that is you define um, progressively more complicated models that build off of earlier models, and then you compare those models to figure out which one is explains the data the most with the fewest number of predictors. Right. So you're trying to balance parsimony with explanatory power. That's what you're trying to do in model comparison. So generally speaking, um, model comparison, you want to start with the simplest model possible. And what is that in the linear model? Well, that is an intercept only model. And that is what is this um, line of code. So again, I use M to define um, uh, model, statistical models or tests. So M0, M1, M2, M3 is how I'm coding these different models that I'm defining. M0 is the intercept only model. And remember, if you want to code the intercept, you use one. So let's run that line of code. And then notice on M1, we build off of that model. It has everything model zero has, but more. So it has the intercept. And it has this predictor called coercive parenting style, which we've explored in detail in the previous tutorial. So we can say that the intercept only model is nested within M1. Run that line of code. Uh, and then M2, uh, you know, again, the same, same idea. M1 is nested within M2, except M2 now has this additional predictor of the amount of time the kid plays video games. We're going to run that line of code. And then M3 uh, has everything that M2 has. So M2 is nested within M3 with this additional predictor of sibling aggression. So this is the aggression scores, again, 0 to 5 point scale um, of the, each kid's older sibling or siblings. Let's run that line of code. So we've defined all of our models that we're going to compare. Basically, we're trying to figure out which one explains the data the best with the least amount of predictors. So to begin, I need to explain um, some nomenclature that you'll see when you're looking up things about model comparison. So I talk about the reduced versus the full model. So the full model contains the reduced model and more, right? So that's the idea that the reduced model is nested within the full model. And, and, and that nesting needs to actually happen in order to do a valid model comparison. Uh, for hierarchical linear regression. So another term for full versus reduced models is the restricted, which is the reduced versus unrestricted, meaning the full model. I prefer reduced versus full. It just makes more sense to me. So for our first uh, iteration of this model comparison, um, we're going to say the reduced model is the simplest model, which is the intercept only model. 
And the full model is the, is the simple linear regression with the intercept plus that one predictor of coercive parenting style. And uh, let's actually look at those models. So the intercept only doesn't actually have any fit statistics because it's just an intercept. It has no other parameters. Um, and uh, the intercept it, it does have a, an estimated coefficient, which is 1.995, which actually is just the mean of the aggression scores. And that's a general principle of linear models. An intercept only model is just the mean of the outcome measure. It has its standard error and t-value, and there's a p-value associated with it, a two-tailed two p-value. Um, all that says is that the there's um, it's statistically significant that the um, estimate of the intercept is not zero. That is 99% of the time not a meaningful or important piece of information, even though it might be true, because most of the time as researchers or clinicians, we're not interested in whether or not the intercept of a linear model is zero. It doesn't necessarily always matter. Um, what is the full model? So the full model we already have looked at in the previous tutorial. It ha it's that um, simple linear regression. It has the exact same output. Um, I'm not going to review it. We already have gone through this in detail, but that is what it is. So now we want to do, we want to compare these two models. We want to ask ourselves, does this full model explain the data better, or explain the, the aggression scores better than just knowing the overall average of the aggression scores, which is what the intercept only model is. The way you do that in R is using the ANOVA function. This is a built-in function. This is the ANOVA function. Let me highlight it. The built-in function in R. I want to draw your attention to this one thing. Notice that it starts with a lowercase a. There is a difference. Um, there is another ANOVA function that starts with a capital A um, and that is a special package, and we go over that. It does a different thing. Um, so for model comparison, for hierarchical linear regression, you want to use um, this particular function. And what you're doing is you're comparing two models at a time, and what you want to look at is whether or not the F statistic, which is what this ANOVA is going to do, is significant. If it is statistically significant, then what that means is that the full model provides a better explanation or explains more of the variance in the outcome measure compared to the reduced model. And the way you quantify the amount of variance that it explains is by taking the R squared, which is here. This is the unadjusted R squared. This is the adjusted R squared. Um, so let's just go into the examples to make this concrete. And again, all of this is in the statistics lecture, so we're not going to dwell too much on this. So let's run this line of code. And look at our output. We have this ANOVA table. So I want to draw your attention to a few things. So the analysis of variance table says what model one is, which is our intercept only model, and model two is our simple linear regression. Let's explain these columns. Might be a little bit um, confusing. So first of all, one and two, these rows corresponds to model one and model two. And what is happening is so um, res.df is the um, degrees of freedom of the residuals of each of these models. The RSS is the residual sum of squares, okay? And the degrees of freedom, this DF, is actually the difference between the residual degrees of freedom, which is, of course, just one. And then the sum of squares is the difference between the um, residual sum of squares of the uh, full model versus the reduced model. Right? So if we take this, minus 64.8, we get 3. And then the F statistic is, uh, is basically the, the, um, is the actual statistics that is, that is comparing the amount of variance that is explained by the full model over, over and above the intercept only model. And it is statistically significant, meaning that the Full model explains the data um, over and above the intercept only model. And notice this, if you haven't already noticed it, what is the F statistic? It is 30.8 and its p-value is a bunch of zeros with a four at the end. Very interesting. If you look at, look at our summary of the full model itself and look at this overall model fit. Well, this shouldn't be surprising um, to those of you who've done statistics before. 
the F statistic in a um, linear regression is basically comparing the, the regression model to the intercept only model, which is what we've basically done just now in a just a more convoluted way. We've, we've compared the intercept only model with this simple linear regression, and of course it produced the exact same F statistic with the exact same P value because these are the exact same tests, okay? Now um, let's move on and actually compare now our um, model one with model two. So now model one is our reduced model and model two is our full model. So um, we, since we already know what the, the, the summary of the reduced model is, we'll just run the summary of the full model. So notice here, so now we have uh, the amount of time the kid plays video games and um, uh, we have, uh, it's, multi, it's unadjusted R squared, which is uh, 6.53 and the adjusted is 6.25. And then we have the F statistic comparing this model to the intercept only model, okay? Now, the key thing to point, pull out, and I, I say this here, is you wanna get the R squared of the reduced and the full model. This is where it actually matters. We didn't matter when we were comparing the intercept only model with the full model, um, with the simple linear regression model, because the intercept only model doesn't actually produce an R squared. But in this case, where we're comparing two models, we actually get an R squared for each, the reduced and the full. So we know, Let's just take the adjusted since this is a better R squared metric. So what we want to do is take the difference between them. So we have basically approximately 4% of the overall variance in, um, in uh, child aggression scores are explained by the reduced model. And with this full model, about 6% of the overall variance is explained by the full model. And the difference between them is just shy of 2%. So there's been an increment in the explanatory power of our linear model by about 2% of the overall variance. Um, and what we're doing in the model comparison is seeing if that 2% is statistically significant using the F test. So let's run the ANOVA. And what do you know it is? So the F test, uh, the, so it produced a, uh, an F statistics of 14.8, uh, which again, in case, it, in case you're, um, you're not tracking, um, it's different than this because it's doing a totally different test um, because this is comparing the, the full model with the intercept only model. That's not what we're doing here. We're comparing model one, which is the simple linear regression with model two, which is a multiple regression. So obviously the F, F statistic is gonna be different, but the crucial thing is that it's statistically significant. So what does that mean? What that means is that um, based off of this hierarchical linear regression analysis that there has been a statistically significant incremental um, change in the R squared of, uh, of the model. In other words, that video game playing incrementally predicts child aggression scores over and above a coercive parenting style is another way you would say it. So that's kind of cool. That's a useful piece of information. And then finally, let's compare model two with model three. So um, let's run those and basically do exactly what we just did. So we know we'll just, well, we'll just run both so it's easier to get the R squares. So let's run both. So we already know the unadjusted or the adjusted, I mean, R squared of the reduced of this, of now the reduced model is about 6%. And we're gonna minus it from this, this full model, which is a little bit more but uh, not as substantial an increase. So it's about, it's less than 1%, 0.3% um, increase in the R squared. So now we wanna ask ourselves, or using the F test, is that a significant increase in the explanatory power? In other words, does sibling aggression incrementally predict child aggression scores over and above um, the parenting style and uh, video game playing. And we just run the ANOVA to answer that question. So let's do that. And, oh, it doesn't, that's so sad. So um, model one is, uh, is obviously the multiple regression uh, with just the two predictors. Model two is another multiple regression with model one nested within it, but with this additional predictor of sibling aggression. And, um, you know, unfortunately the F, uh, statistic is not statistically significant. So what does that mean? 
So what that means is if we were, you could in theory go on and make ever more complicated um, models uh, with the other models nested within it, but we're just going to stop here for the sake of teaching. But basically what this means is um, based off of all the data we've collected, the simplest model, assuming we have only collected three predictors, the simplest model is one, the simplest model of child aggression scores is one where we have course of parenting style and video game playing as predictors. And that explains approximately 6% of the overall variance in um, child aggression scores. And that's it for model comparison for a hierarchical linear regression. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for next tutorial where we're actually going to be going into, um, uh, I believe, how to select predictors for um, for uh, multiple regression, because that's a whole science in and of itself, and it's definitely essential to know how to do that in R. So I'm going to spend some time showing you how to do that. Um, so thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. And um, until next time, take care.